Well, hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July the 28th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, before we get to our text this morning, I want to give you a series of statistics, and I want to see if you can guess what we're going to talk about today. 57% of pastors do this. That's one out of every two pastors in the United States of America. 64% of youth pastors do this. 47% of Christian men do this. And 12% of Christian women do this. In other words, one out of every two people that you meet that call themselves Christians engage in this. And these statistics were taken over 10 years ago. So the numbers are most assuredly higher even today. Can you guess what we're going to discuss? Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, and let's look at verse 27 and verse 28. Jesus says, You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. The topic that I want to discuss with you this morning, friends, is a topic, again, that seems to be hidden by many. There is much guilt and much shame carried in the heart because of the practice of these individuals who are involving themselves in it. This practice would be that of pornography. Now, when most people hear pornography, they may think of participating in rated X movies. But friends, pornography can come from a Disney cartoon. Pornography can come from the Cosmopolitan magazine that you read. Pornography can come from a commercial or a TV show or a movie that you're watching. And it most assuredly and most likely will come through social media, the internet. You see, it's interesting because 20, 30, 40 years ago, you would only find pornography in magazines that you buy at the newsstand or rated X movies that you would have to go to a theater to see. But pornography is so easily accessible today that most don't even think twice about it. A friend sends us a text or a picture or a, or a tweet or I have to apologize because I've never even sent a text message in my life, so I don't know what most of these things are. But I know that you can receive these images, these jokes, these pictures on your cell phone. And so many Christians laugh about them and find them humorous. And friends, if you knew how evil they were in the sight of God, you would fall on your face in repentance, in shame, in sorrow, in guilt, weeping, and begging for his mercy and his forgiveness. Uh, let's look at those statistics again. One out of every two pastors in America is involved in pornography. One out of every two youth pastors is involved in pornography. 47%, and again, this was 10 years ago, so we could surely say probably more than 50%. Again, one out of every two Christian men are involved in pornography. And if you are not involved in this activity, friend, first of all, you should thank the Lord Jesus Christ. And second of all, this should break your heart. Now, again, these statistics could be a little skewed as well because it says only 12% of women are involved in pornography. But if I remember right, when I was a kid, there was this book series. I think it was called the Harlequin Book Series. I don't ever remember a man reading those books. Those were women books but they were filled with pornographical imagery that was created through the imagination of the mind by the words that you were reading on the page. Well, that's pornography. So again, these numbers are probably skewed because the people who answered these surveys answered them based upon what their definition of pornography was. But pornography is simply anything that causes sexual arousal. 
For a nine-year-old boy, that could be a Barbie doll. For a teenager, it could be something that he sees in a video game. For a young adult, it could be an image that he receives on the phone. And for an older adult, it could be something that he looks for on the internet. Maybe something that even pops up on the internet while he's searching for something else. And when these things pop up, how quick are we to shut them off? Or does that stoke our curiosity, our sensuality, and cause us to spend more time there than necessary? And friends, this isn't just a simple problem. This is an addiction, the same as heroin or cocaine. And so let's end this morning by looking just a few more passages of the Bible that speak to this evil that resides in the hearts of so many who consider themselves followers of Jesus. And if it's you, friends, I'm praying for you. And I I trust that you will go before God with an open heart, with a sincere heart, and that you will seek deliverance from this sinful practice that is plaguing your soul and destroying your relationship with your God. First of all, we must understand what it is. So let's turn to James chapter 1 verse 14 and 15. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts, his own cravings, his own desires. There's something appealing about these images. But then look at verse 15. It says, when lust, when this desire has conceived, it brings forth sin. And this sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Jesus promised us eternal life, but not if we're practicing in such things, friends. We have to be free and delivered from these things. And if the spirit of the living God resides within us, then we are free, friends. But we have to exercise some self-control and some self-discipline. It's no different for me than it is you. As a grown, unmarried man, I am enticed to do such things. But I have to remember that I'm a child of the living God and I will not tolerate such evil in my life. And so when my flesh starts to whisper such enticements to me, I take these thoughts into captivity under the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ and I remove them from my life. And I can assure you, the longer you do it, the easier it gets each time. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Mortify kill, destroy, therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication. Now notice, these are all sexual sins. Uncleanness and inordinate affection. Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. The works of the flesh are manifest. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness. And finally, look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You see, Jesus told us in our text, you don't have to go out and commit the physical act of adultery to be guilty of it. All you have to do is lust after a woman, lust after a man in your heart. And you're guilty of it. Because that's how sin begins. That's what got King David. He looked, he saw He fed those thoughts and he committed the act. But the sin began the moment he looked upon her and did not turn away. Friends, in the day and age that we live in, pornography presents itself in many ways. It comes wrapped in many packages. But the fact of the matter is, if it causes sexual arousal in any form, in any fashion, it's pornography. It's sin before God. And it will only bring death, which is the opposite of eternal life. Please, friend, if you're plagued by this issue, deal with it. Go before the Father in brokenness and humility and seek deliverance. And he has promised, if you ask, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to empower you with his spirit so you never have to participate in these things again. Walk in victory today, friend. Quit being a servant to evil. For if you call yourself a Christian, that's a mockery to the cross. Well, I love you, friends. I pray that Yahweh blesses your journey. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.